So you guys all kind of got a little bit of a feel for how the system responds to you now. And now we're going to show you some science that explains how everything works, okay? We're going to take this atmospheric simulation and show you it in higher detail. So let's zoom in a little bit. And now let's add a little bit of trails to the particles so we can watch their history a little bit. There we go. Okay. Whenever you see a picture of a molecule in a textbook, it's always just sitting on the page doing nothing. But the fact is, atoms and molecules are in constant motion. They're not static structures. They're wiggling and jiggling all the time. And there is a very famous physicist called Richard Feynman, and he said, everything in the universe can be explained by the wigglings and jigglings of atoms. Okay, and that's what you're seeing here right now. You're seeing that everything is in perpetual motion. And if you were able to see the air molecules around you, you would see that they're in this perpetual motion. So I like to think of this as a dance. There's three different kinds of important motion that atoms and molecules undergo. The first kind of motion, it's called translational motion. And translational motion just means moving from A to B. So if I'm going to go over there, it just means I'm going like this. So translational motion you can identify in this simulation by atoms and molecules that have very long trails behind them. Okay, because the trails are basically showing you the history of where it traveled. The second kind of motion is rotational motion. So rotational motion is spinning motion. Rotational motion looks like little curly cues. So does anybody see any molecules that are spinning around each other doing curly cues? The last kind of motion that's important is vibrational motion. So I am rotating, I'm vibrating, I'm translating. Vibrational motion happens when the guys are going like this, because they have a chemical bond between them, and they're moving, and they're making a vibe. And then really interesting things happen when you see rotation and vibration happening at the exact same time. Every single atom in the entire universe, atoms that are by themselves and atoms that are in molecules, feel a force on them. And the force that they feel depends on all the other atoms and molecules that are in their neighborhood. It's kind of like if you're in a crowd with lots of people and you're getting bumped around. If you bump into someone, you get a force that kicks you back the other way. Maybe if it's your friend, you experience an attractive force because they give you a hug. The, the way that forces work for atoms and molecules is as follows. When atoms are close together, their electrons are in close communication. And the forces that they feel are very strong. When atoms are very far apart, their electrons are not in very close communication. And the forces that they feel are very weak. So they don't really affect each other's motion very much. What you see is that atoms in a particular molecule interact strongly, and that's why they vibrate, because each of the different atoms in the molecule is exerting a force on the other guy and making them vibrate. But molecules that are very far apart from each other don't exert a force until they get very close. So watch what happens when they collide. What you see is that the way that they're rotating, vibrating, and translating changes at the moment that they collide. The reason that the energy transfer happens when they collide is because, like I told you, atoms and molecules, when they're far apart, the forces aren't very strong between them. But when they collide, the forces are extremely strong, and then they kick each other in a totally different direction. The way that this system works is very similar to what I just told you about how atoms feel forces from other atoms. So let's turn my energy field on. There's two kinds of forces that are important to understanding how atoms and molecules work. There's attractive forces. So those are the kinds of forces that keep atoms in a chemical bond. And then there's repulsive forces. Those are the kind of forces that make it so that when two molecules collide, they fly away from each other. They repel each other. And so one of the things that we can do with this system right, is we can change my force field to be either repulsive. So repulsive is what I am right now. So as I walk through the space, you see they fly away from me. We can make it so that my force field is attractive. So look, now I'm attractive. And all the atoms and molecules are swarming into me. Now I have all the atomic power inside of me. I told you earlier that the way that forces work between atoms and molecules depends on how far away they are. Well, the way that this system works depends on how close I am to these cameras. If I get very, very close to the cameras, 
that I'm very strong and I can attract all the power to within me. If I move away, my force field gets weaker and weaker till eventually all the atoms and molecules inside me just fly back away into the atmosphere. And that's the same way that forces work in the air molecules that we're all surrounded in right now.